Hi guys and welcome to the fifth video of the entire series where we are talking about Active Directory Federation Service or ADFS. In the last video, we discussed what is a security token. We discussed what is claim, what is claims based application and why you should choose claims based identity option for your organization. In this video, we will be discussing what are endpoints in ADFS. We will discuss different types of endpoints and their importance, and then I'll show you how you can manage these endpoints using PowerShell or from ADFS Management Console. From this particular video onwards, we are going to deep dive into ADFS. We will be talking about endpoints, relying party trust, claims provider trust, federation metadata, ADFS authentication and much more. So let's start with endpoints. What are endpoints in ADFS? An application can be a browser based application or it can be a rich client application. For example, Outlook client. That means a user can access this application using either a web browser or using Outlook client. And if this application is integrated with ADFS server, then ADFS server should be capable enough to receive all types of applications request. It should be able to receive the request from web based applications and from rich client applications as well. But how ADFS server will identify that the request that he is getting is coming from a web based application or it is a rich client application. ADFS identifies these type of request with the help of endpoints. When we install ADFS, few endpoints are created automatically. You can access these endpoints either from ADFS Management Console or you can run get-ADFS endpoint and this will list all of the endpoints of your ADFS server. These endpoints are responsible to receive certain types of request. There are multiple endpoints in ADFS server, but for this particular session, we are going to talk about two important endpoints. The first endpoint that we're going to talk about is ADFS slash LS and trust slash MEX. ADFS slash LS endpoint is responsible to receive request from web based applications. That means if user is trying to access a web based application, that request will be processed by ADFS slash LS endpoint. And if user is trying to access a rich client application, that request will be processed by trust slash MEX endpoint. Here MEX stands for exchange metadata. And when a user tries to access a web based application, this type of authentication is called passive authentication. And this type of authentication request is received by ADFS slash LS endpoint. And when user tries to access an Outlook application, that type of authentication is called active authentication. And this type of authentication request is processed by trust slash MEX endpoint. If you check these endpoints in your ADFS server, you can see that these endpoints are secured with HTTPS. That means any communication that is happening on this endpoint is secured and these endpoints are secured with the service communication certificate of your ADFS server. I will show you this practically as well. The next part that you see in this endpoint is the federation service name of your ADFS server. And next to the federation service name is the URL of the endpoint that is responsible to receive certain request. First, let me show you how you can access or manage the endpoints from ADFS Management Console. If you want to open ADFS Management Console, you can go to Server Manager. 
go to tools and then click ADFS management. From ADFS management console, go to service and then go to endpoints. On this particular page, you will see the list of all the endpoints. Those are available within your ADFS server. Now, the first thing that you will see is enabled. If you see yes next to any endpoint under enabled, if it says yes, that means this particular endpoint is enabled on this ADFS server. Now, what does it mean? This ADFS endpoint is ADFS slash LS. That means this endpoint is responsible to receive request from the web applications. Now, if I disable this endpoint, now this endpoint will not be able to receive any request from a web-based application. Whenever you enable or disable any endpoint, you need to restart ADFS service. For this, you will go to services.msc. And the first service that you see here, Active Directory Federation Services, you just need to restart this service so that these changes can be replicated on the Windows, your ADFS server. Moreover, if you have multiple ADFS servers within your farm, let's say you have five ADFS servers in your farm and you are enabling or disabling an endpoint, in that case, you need to restart this service on all of the ADFS servers. Next is proxy enabled. We will talk about proxy server later, uh, but for your understanding for this particular video, proxy server or ADFS proxy server is, which is responsible to receive requests. Those are coming from the external network. We do not publish ADFS server to the internet. So that means any user who is trying to access an application from external network, his request will not reach to our ADFS server. That is the reason we deploy ADFS proxy server. So proxy server will receive the request, then it will forward that request to the ADFS server. So if endpoint is not enabled on proxy server, that means that request will not reach to the proxy server. Now here you can see this endpoint is enabled in ADFS server, but this endpoint is not enabled in proxy server. So if a user will try to access a federated application from external network, then he will not be able to reach to that application. So what do you need to do to enable this endpoint on proxy server? You will click on enable on proxy and you need to restart this ADFS service and this endpoint will be enabled on the proxy server as well. In the same way, if you want to enable this endpoint on ADFS server or on proxy server, you can click on enable and these endpoints will be enabled. All these endpoints are secured with the service communication certificate of your ADFS server. Let's go to PowerShell and let's run get iPhone ADFS endpoint. And let's look for the endpoints only. For example, if I if I copy this endpoint and let's go to browser. Paste the endpoint here and then go to certificate. Let's go to details and go to thumbprint. The thumbprint of this certificate starts with 69, ends with EF. Now let's go to ADFS management console and go to certificates. Double click on service communication certificate. Go to details, go to thumbprint. And here you can see starts with 6.9, ends with EF. 
So this service communication certificate is used for securing the endpoints on your ADFS server. Now, if you want to access endpoints from PowerShell, you can run get hyphen ADFS endpoint, press enter, and it will list all of the endpoints within your ADFS server. Now let's say you want to enable or disable a particular endpoint, or let's say this endpoint is disabled, so let's enable it. From PowerShell also, you can enable the endpoint on the ADFS server, and you can enable it on the proxy as well. So let's say you want to enable this particular endpoint. Copy this endpoint. And the command to enable ADFS endpoint is enable hyphen ADFS endpoint hyphen target full URL and then type the URL or the endpoint that you just copied or you want to modify. Press enter. So when you will enable or disable any endpoint from PowerShell as well, you need to restart ADFS service. And after that, this particular endpoint will be replicated on the ADFS server. If you want to disable this endpoint, you can run disable hyphen ADFS endpoint hyphen target full URL and paste the endpoint. Press enter. Again, you need to restart the service and then this service will be or the endpoint will be disabled. If you want to enable a particular endpoint on proxy server, for that command is set hyphen ADFS endpoint hyphen target full URL. And let's say we want to enable this particular endpoint. Paste the endpoint and then type hyphen proxy and give it a value dollar true because we are going to enable it. Press enter. Again, you need to restart ADFS service and let's verify so here you can see this particular endpoint is enabled on the proxy server as well in the next video we will be talking about relying party trust we will be discussing what is relying party trust i will show you how to create relying party trust and then i will demonstrate you how to integrate claims x-ray tool with adfs server as a relying party and how to test authentication using this tool. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.